I'm going to give you my top five Green Bay Packers to keep an eye on today. You could easily make a list 10, probably 20, but I'm going to give you my five that I'm going to be looking at. I don't know exactly how much people are going to be playing or who exactly is going to be playing, but still, these are my top five guys that I am most excited to watch today. Make sure you do me a favor, drop a comment below if there's somebody that you want on the list or thought should have been on the list or is on your list but wasn't on mine. But with that, let's get started. Number one, very obviously, Jordan Love. There's not a lot to talk about with Jordan Love. In fact, I've already done a video pretty much laying all these things out in terms of what I'm looking for. But Jordan Love is now the starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. There's really nothing else that's more important. Everybody else on this list could be terrible. If Jordan Love is the next Aaron Rodgers, I could not care any less. So we're not going to get any definitive answers one way or another, whether he is the mega elite, super great quarterback. But I'd like to get a little glimpse of that. Um, just as a preview to what I talked about, and I'll, I'll put a link somewhere up in here where you can click on that previous video. But what I'm looking for is consistency. Right. Not just like, hey, one really great throw and then a pick and then a great throw and then a bad. throw. You know what I mean? Just consistency. Number two is Jaden Reed. And yes, yes, there are going to be a lot of rookies on here. I'm sorry. I just haven't really had a chance to see these guys. They're new. They're flashy. I'm excited about them. But Jaden Reed is number two on my list. Now, according to the unofficial depth chart, Samore Ture is ahead of him. I don't necessarily buy that. I think Jaden Reed come week one will be the number three wide receiver. In fact, all through training camp, he's already been the number three in terms of who's been running with the ones more often than everybody else. But I, I think at this point, there are still questions about how good this wide receiver group, along with the running backs and the tight ends, how good these guys really are. And so if Jaden Reed can end up looking as though he might be a weapon, then then you know you don't worry as much if maybe Christian doesn't have the explosive season that you know he can have, or if Romeo Dobbs in that connection with Jordan isn't quite as good, or whatever the case may be, as long as Jaden can take up a little bit of that, we don't need three elite wide receivers, but we got to have something. So it'd be great to see Jaden break out and show that potential that we saw from him in college. At number three, I've got Luke Musgrave. Again, another rookie. Now, honestly, I wasn't as big of a fan of Luke Musgrave uh, when we drafted him. Not a lot going on. I mean, his first couple years in college, he really wasn't that impressive. He didn't grade out very well. His statistics weren't all that great. And then he had a quote-unquote breakout year last year, but it was two games. So I didn't really understand the appeal of it. Then we draft him, and you come to find out this guy's cracking 20 miles per hour GPS. Now, I went back and looked at the statistics over the years that Next Gen Stats tracks. I believe 19 miles an hour is the fastest they've clocked any tight ends in the NFL. There was also a clip in one of the practices. Apparently, Matt LaFleur went back to the wide receiver and started making fun of him because Luke Musgrave was the fastest person on the field that day. So we know what he's capable of, right? He's 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 a even for a wide receiver, he's pretty quick. But he's six foot six. He's a massive human being. He's already making a ton of plays. So I just want to see a little top end. I want to see a little bit of that Luke Musgrave in action. I'm excited for it, and I'm hoping we get a little glimpse of that coming up. At number four, Devontae Wyatt. Devontae Wyatt has been maybe the most impressive person in camp so far. He was a rookie last year. Um, as like most people that the Green Bay Packers draft, unbelievably high upside. The, the, the guy is, I remember my, my favorite quote, when he was doing an interview, somebody asked him, when did you realize, you know, how fast you were, how athletic you were? And he had to think about it for a second. He said, you know, it was during the uh, the preparation for the for the 40 time. Um, and they actually kicked me off the defensive line group and put me with the linebackers. That's when I realized I was pretty fast. <laughs> so but he but he has just got unbelievable, you know, get off and, and power and everything else in his body. And the amount of times he has pancaked offensive linemen, reverse pancakes, if you will. Is, is pretty staggering. Now, it makes you a little bit nervous about your offensive line, but we've seen these guys. We know what they can do, and it's basically just Devontae Wyatt that's doing it. But I want to see him do it against another team. So that's going to be somebody I'm going to be keying in on and seeing if he can wreak as much havoc. And honestly, the entire interior defensive line, especially our defensive ends, Clark, Wyatt, Wooden, and Brooks, have all been unbelievably impressive. I'm going to be wanting to watch all of them. But Devontae Wyatt stands out even above the rookies because he's been the most impressive so far. 
And finally, at number five is rookie Lucas Van Ness. He wouldn't have been on this list like a week ago. Um, he's another one that I, I kind of liked, but he felt sort of raw and unrefined insofar as he's powerful. And that's great. I mean, you can use that. You can use that power to collapse the pocket and um, allow the people from the interior or somebody else to get to the quarterback. Maybe he can get to the quarterback, but you can generate pressures that way. But that was about it for me. I, I didn't really think we'd see a massive leap. Then I saw some of the clips from Family Night. That was the first time I got to, to see his ability to move that massive body that he has. Just seeing him lined up, you can see him from space. The sky is massive. They don't call him Hercules for nothing. He lines up, he's massive, and then you just kind of build a mental picture in your head of how that's going to look when it moves. Once that ball snaps, how's it going to look? And you, you picture something that's more stiff and a little bit more clunky than what I witnessed. And the guy's a ability to move that body was really impressive, and then the power on top of that. But again, it's only against, from what I saw for the most part, Zach Tom, who is our right tackle. I want to see that against somebody else. Now, in the Bengals practice, we didn't get a ton of updates on that Bengals uh, scrimmage, the, the, uh, the joint scrimmage. But we did hear that Lucas Van Ness had himself a heck of a day and was tearing that offensive line up. So, again, I don't know how many opportunities he's going to get. I'm guessing as a rookie he'll be out there a decent amount, and I am very, very excited to see what he can do. So, anyways, that's it. Those are my top five. Again, be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know who your top five are or just anybody that you feel should have been on this list that would have been on yours. Otherwise, enjoy the game. Tomorrow we're going to recap it and uh, give some thoughts on what happened.